Welcome to the SPM Connect for Committees tutorial. We are going to cover logging in, reviewing and posting in the discussion area, library, and events, and editing your profile and settings. The first step in accessing SBM Connect is entering Connect from the State Bar webpage, michbar.org. On this page, select SBM Connect and not the member area. If you accidentally select the member area, you will not be able to access Connect. Once you enter SBM Connect, you will be brought to the home screen, but you will not be able to access any information until you log in. In the upper right hand corner, select Sign In. Here you can either enter your PIN number or your username. The username and password that you use will be the same username and password that you use to log in to pay your annual dues. If you have any issues, please select Need Your Login Information and it will provide you with information on how to access your login information. Once you enter SBM Connect, you will be able to access any sections and committees of which you are a member. You can access your committee information in a few different ways, but the easiest is to select Communities under your photo in the upper right hand side of the screen. This page will only list the communities, committees, and groups to which you have access. If you scroll down to the committee you would like to view, it provides you with some additional information. You can select the committee here, or you can go directly to the discussions, libraries, or members. We will start by accessing the committee page. This front page provides you with access to all of the committee related activities. The first tab is Community Home, which will bring you back to this home screen. It also lists latest shared files, discussion posts, and announcements. If you scroll down, it will also provide you with all of the upcoming events and the ability to add an event. The first tab after Home is the Discussion tab. It provides you with an area where you can communicate with your committee in a listserv type format. However, discussion posts last forever unless removed, so be, please be conscious of what you post. To post in the discussion area, choose Post to this discussion. Carefully review the two box to ensure that you are actually in the committee that you would like to select, because if you do drop down, you can see all of the committees to which you have access. Unless you want to cross post to another committee, do not change the cross post to box. Here it says no additional discussions. You would enter the subject that will become not only the subject of this discussion post, but also an email that will be sent to all members. Enter your message in the message box and use the drop downs at the top to format your message. You may also want to add a document to your post. You may do that by using the attach button at the bottom. If you do attach a document, it will also appear in the library, which we will review next. Once you complete your message, click send and your post will appear in the discussion thread and be emailed to the committee members. If the committee members reply to the SBM Connect email, their response will also appear in the discussion thread and be sent to the entire committee. Therefore, it is important to be conscious of your reply to messages as well as your initial discussion post. Another point on discussion posts. If you cut and paste a prepared post from a Word document, the formatting may not be what you had in the Word document. Please reformat your messages in SBM Connect using the tools here. Now we will look at the library. This is the tool that will likely be used the most by committees. In the library, you have two views. You can either look at the list view, which provides the documents that have been recently added to the library in a list view, or you can select the folder view. Under the folder view, you can add a new folder. In the new folder, you can add new contents by clicking on new. And you title your document. 
you can provide a description. The description would be helpful if you are interested in having the description be searchable in the search function, which we'll look at in just a little bit. Under Library, please ensure that the committee listed is the committee in which you want the document posted. You can also select the folder that you selected initially, or if you made a mistake, you can choose a different folder. Next, we choose the entry type. For the most part, the selection will be standard file upload, unless you're uploading a hyperlink webinar or a YouTube video. Click standard file upload and next. The easiest way to add a document is to drag and drop that document into the box. Otherwise, you can use the choose function and select from your computer. Finally, we upload the files and you can see existing files and the file that we just uploaded is attached here. You can add additional files and as far as we know, you can add as many as you like. You can either do next or finish. If you select next, it will allow you to add a new title or different title to your document. So if you're saving your document in a way that is that the title isn't clear, you can enter a title for this document here. You can also enter a description again if you would like it searchable. If you select next, it gives you an opportunity to select the type of document. For instance, if we were uploading an agenda, it would allow us to search for agenda later. Once we click finish, we can see the title that we selected here, how many views, how many files were attached if it had been shared, and if someone selected it as their favorite. You can see the documents attached here and add comments at the bottom if you choose. If we go back to the library, we can see our test document has been added. It shows up first because it is the most recent document. If we go to the folder view, it will show us our folders. Under the folders option, you can see the main committee folder and the subfolders, including the subfolder that we just created, test folder. If you click on that folder, our document appears on the right hand side. The next tab is the events tab. And this tab provides you with a list of all events scheduled for this committee. For example, if we choose one of the upcoming events, it provides us with the date and time, as well as the location. And for our committees, we enter the conference number and passcode so that those are available at any time. One of the other nice features about this is that if you click here on download to your calendar, it will open up an appointment for your personal electronic calendar. Unless you created the event, you will not have the edit event button here up on the right hand side but it also provides you with the contact information for the person who scheduled the event. If you would like to create a new event, select Add Event in the upper right-hand corner. It will bring you to a screen to Create Edit Event. First, you select your event title and event type. And again, ensure that the community that you select is the committee for which you would like to schedule the event. Select the start date and time and the end date and time. You also must select the time zone each and every time you create a new event. If you would like the event not to display after it is complete, you can select do not display or if you would like a historical record of all events you can select always display. Under event location please select United States and you can add in person at a physical location and add all of the information about where your event is to take place. If you are also having the event take place on a conference call or online, you can add these as well. If you are the person to contact about the event, you can simply click insert my contact information and it will automatically display your name, the email address that you've provided to the bar, 
and your phone number. You can describe the event, and here you can also add photographs or other event information, though you do not have to complete anything in this box. You can also upload an event logo. If you would like your members to register, you can select external registration. However, SBM Connect does not have a registration function within um, SBM Connect, but some people use outside third-party websites for registration. Once you have completed your event, select Finish. It will appear under the Events tab. Please know that no notification of your event will be emailed to the members of your committee. So if you want information sent directly to them, you must create a separate discussion post. The final tab is the membership tab. This page provides you with a current searchable list of all members and includes the most up-to-date contact information available to the bar. If you select any member, you can email them directly, send them an internal message, add them as a contact, and view their profile. Now, no presentation would be complete without an encouragement of you to update your profile. In the upper right-hand corner, where you see the silhouette and the drop-down arrow, select Profile. Under your name is your contact information, your profile, your connections, contributions, and your account. This provides you with access to all of your personal information. To add a photo, under your avatar, select Actions, Change Picture. This brings you into the member area where you can update your profile. On the right-hand side, under Member Area, select My Profile. Here it has all of your current contact information. Under Expanded Profile, it has your law school, year of graduation, and all the way down at the bottom, it has your photo. You can choose file and select a file from your personal computer. And at the bottom, select Save. Please be advised, though, that this also updates your profile and your photo in the State Bar of Michigan ZeekBeak directory. Currently, if you log into SBM Connect, you can access the member area. But if you log directly into the member area, you may not be able to access SBM Connect. If we go back to Connect, if you would like to control the number of emails that you receive and how you receive emails from SBM Connect, select My Account on the right-hand side and Community Notifications. This provides you with each of the committees to which you are a member and that you have access and under Notification, you can select Real-Time, Daily Digest, No Email, or Plain Text. You also have the ability to change the email address to which you receive the notifications. So if you have more than one email address or you would like to have them sent to someone else in your office, you can select a different email address under Delivery Details. This is Alicia Russwinkle. Thank you for reviewing the SBM Connect tutorial. Please contact your staff liaison with any questions, and we hope that you enjoy using SBM Connect.